can you tell if you are pregnant? And how can you track your ovulation? These are huge questions um, so many people have had on the path to pregnancy. So luckily for us, we have someone who has all the answers and she looks good too. So here to help us navigate that journey is our fertility expert, Dr. Marjorie Dixon. How are you? Dixon, yeah, you get this yeah. all the time. This is your life. And when it comes down to that moment in your life where you want to be pregnant, you really are paying attention to the details. Of course. So let's talk about the whole journey. So I, I think that I have to segue with, as fertility specialists or as doctors, we do a really good job of teaching people contraception. We don't do a really good job of teaching people how to conceive when it's time. Yes. And so people are accustomed to tracking their cycles kind of sort of, and they kind of sort of know when they're ovulating, which is right before it's the right time to have sex. Right. So people will check their mucus and look for the, the, the stretchy, what they call egg yolk, egg white mucus. I yeah. wonder when doctors decided it, it looked like food, <laughs> but whatever. That, or they'll test their breasts, or they'll be like, oh, I felt that pain and that twinge. Those are all subjective ways. Yes. They're not that reliable. There are much more reliable ways of knowing how this happens, and it's actually you can track a hormone in, that happens in your blood, but it, it's excreted in your urine or your pee. So okay. you can actually test for this hormone. It's called the ovulation hormone. It's known as LH, or luteinizing hormone. Mm -hmm. I like to think of things in music. So there's an orchestra, a conductor in your brain that's making a hormone that's talking about how it comes out. At the beginning of your cycle, so if you look at this graph, at the beginning of your cycle, that ovulation hormone is really low. It's your baseline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not much happening, the conductor is quiet. But then, right about time of ovulation, the conductor gets really loud, mm -hmm. and then right after the loud, you ovulate. 24 to 48 hours later, about 36 hours later. Okay. That's the ovulation surge, okay? So that's, that's the right. Bugs Bunny scene where the, the windows are the crashing and like and the, the trumpets music's and out of control. And then, ovulation and okay. those next two days after your LH surge are the days that you're most fertile in the month so that's oh, when you should be exposed okay. to sperm if you're having sex you have sex if you're being inseminated you're inseminated yes and there's actually an over-the-counter test that you can use that shows you that because it comes out in your urine so what like how often would you use that exactly test so remember to find I said out if you're you have ovulating. to establish your baseline early on so you have to start using an LH predictor kit early on in your cycle okay. day five of your cycle sounds day early five. right but that's how you establish your baseline so you test every single day that you can get actually a kit that gives you a one month value so you can't use it again into the next cycle you have to understand how to use the test so this particular test it has to click together mm -hmm. so you have to hear the clicking sound the test is only as good as understanding how to use it and the person interpreting it okay, okay? so right. you have to click it together once it clicks together, I clicked it together beforehand and then it comes a little clock comes up mm -hmm. so then it tells you that it's really good for you to now start taking the test. How do you do it? You pee on it. Mm -hmm. So you can either hold it in your stream of urine mm -hmm. or you can actually take the tip and dip it. You collect your urine into a cup. It's a little cleaner. Mm -hmm. And then you dip the tip of it into the urine container Yeah. and you hold it there. And then after the clock will start flashing saying that it's beginning to test. Okay, so the clock appears. Okay. You're ready to test. You test it. It's flashing. Place it down on your table and wait. Mm -hmm. because then you wait the three minutes. If you shake it or you hold it upside down, you're going to make the test not work. Okay. And then that's where it says no. At the beginning of your cycle, you're not surging, so it says no, 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 no. When it's your fertile day, mm -hmm. it'll say yes. Oh. And it, then are you doing, are you peeing every day? Every on day, that, yeah. From so day five Every on. month you get 30 strips. Oh. And for some women, most the average number of days in the cycle is 20, 28 to 32 on average. Not every woman has an average cycle. Some right. women is longer. Yeah. The time from ovulation to getting your next period is 14 days. That's fixed. Mm -hmm. But the first part, some women have long cycles. Right. So the first part of the cycle, they could be peeing for 30 days before they get their surge. Some Got women. it. Yes. Okay. So that's how you test when it's time and you can actually specify specifically know when it's time to have sperm exposure. And it's important to have sex as soon as you surge the next two days because the sperm waits in the tubes mm -hmm. so that when the happens 36 yes. hours later, the sperm is ready to go. And when you, on those two days, it's two days when you should be exposed to sperm? Yes. Are, should you be having sex the whole day? Once, as, as long as the sperm. I'm just wondering, like are you calling in sick to work? All the gentlemen in the office are, yes, yes, every, just once. Yeah, yeah my husband would be once. like, yes you do, you're no, supposed so to you do it all day. Whoever and say just once I hit it quit it like once on okay. that day and then once the next day and you're covered okay and then after you've done this so then you have that two-week wait and then everybody is wondering so am I pregnant or am I not mm -hmm. now there are also pregnancy tests that you right. take because like they've always been the pregnancy test right. but, but they've gotten great better and better thing, they've gotten better and better so back in our day like 10 years ago was when I took my last pregnancy test mm -hmm. be 
before mm -hmm. I did it for the show, which freaked everybody else out. Like, why do you have the test? Anyway, <laughs> um, but you pee on the stick again. Yes. Um, but now you can actually do it up to five days before your missed period or you're expecting your next period, which is really, really early. Right. Okay, so how you do it is you do the same idea. Yep. So you pee into the cup, mm -hmm. you take your test, mm -hmm. Okay, you dip it in, mm -hmm. or you can hold it in your urine, mm -hmm. okay? So if you hold it in your urine, it can be a little bit messy, but you have to hold it in for the five seconds. Yeah. And then you take your test and you put it on the counter. And you wait. And then you wait. Because that hormone of pregnancy, now it's a different hormone. There's right. LH, but the pregnancy hormone is called HCG, also excreted in your urine. It comes from the placenta. Right. So the developing trophoblast, or the developing pregnancy, it can implant three to seven days after fertilization has happened. Okay. So Sometimes people have a little bit of bleed, they think, oh, I got my period. That's actually a good sign. It's implantation bleeding. Mm -hmm. So then when you do your testing, if you test even five days before your expected missed period, 76% of women that are pregnant will actually have a positive pregnancy test. The, the ability for a test to predict your pregnancy is only as good as as much hormone is in the urine. Right. Some of the important things that I haven't said is, okay, so people say, well, the test didn't work. Well, you have to make sure that you haven't peed for a few hours or it's your first urine of the day, that oh. you haven't drunk for two hours before you take the test because you want concentrated urine as well, right? Oh, I see. That's important too. And then there are confounders. For some women who have really long cycles and their LH isn't the standard based and then the ovulation test is not predictive. Okay. Or if you're taking a pregnancy test and you haven't taken it the right way, you could in fact be pregnant and should retest a couple days later or call your doctor to have a blood test. At the end of the day, it's important for you to understand that these tests exist so that you can establish, is there a problem or is there not a problem? And right. once that's established, then you can get referred to someone like me if need be. Marjorie, such good information. Thank you for that.